and Maestro Echoplex couldn't live without that really. Uh, Mini Moog couldn't live without that. Yeah, those are good, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, the, the Echoplex is probably the best tape echo, isn't it? I, yeah, I think it is. It's because it's so long, I think, that, that bit of tape. Yeah. yeah and and um, and if it's old, it, it's got stuff still on it. Yeah. When you switch it on, it's still got a vibe of whatever you were using it for before. There's a sort of slight halo of the sound that's not quite been rubbed out. Yes. That's and then cool. you can play you can play a part into it and then let it come back, and you get one generation. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And then you let it come back again, and you get another generation of sort of deterioration. Mine doesn't do that. That's the sound on sound, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Why doesn't it do that? Mine's the last one. Oh. And I'm going to try and get one when I'm in the States, actually, this year. But they, well, they, because the motors are a bit wobbly, and I know that this is simulated on, on modern things, but it doesn't ever really quite... It's very chimey and very um, subtly chorusy, if you like, if that's the right word, um, in, in the way that simulators aren't, really. They're a bit too much in some ways. Yeah, so it's a matter of... You need to be able to make a decision with your own taste and you about yeah. exactly how deteriorate or wobbly or yeah. whatever it is. We were just talking about it, um, Yuri 1176 compressor, um, an old one. Just doesn't matter what you do with it, where you set the knobs, it sounds brilliant, you know. Um, and it always sounds a bit like it itself. You can always tell it, I can anyway. Yes, I mean it's got you know bits of kit that one uses. For example, if you, I think that I tend to rationalise myself. If you use something a lot, like a, on a, on an album, then I tend to put it away when we start something else because you just sort of yeah. You otherwise, you can, you can fall back into those things, you know. Because for example, I use that the, the chorus echo a lot, yeah. um, and I haven't turned it on recently because I just think, you know. That's that's done. That's we've done that now, you know. And yeah, so we're into some... other delays at the moment, aren't we? Which we can't speak about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think it's always good to try. Um, we, you know, have the luxury of having new things. If someone took everything away, I think I'd probably want to keep that, which is an Oberheim four voice. Yeah. Um, which is in its box at the moment, keeping dust free. And I do actually, you know, when the going gets tough, that's when that one comes out. Usually. Is it? Yeah. Does it usually give you something? Yeah, it's just got a, it's just got a, it's just distorted inside itself. Yeah. Which gives you a kind of fizzle and um, sort of attitude. Is uh, it is it better than our Sems? Do you think? No, I think it's the same thing. It's the same, yeah. Because yeah. I like my Sems a they're, lot. Yeah, they're great, absolutely. I, I mean, before I had the four voice, I used to use them all the time. Yeah, they yeah. I'm tempted to get a two voice. I was tempted by the recent four voice, but yes, I mean they are. The thing about the old things is, well, you know, it's a. It's a labour of love because you have to keep them working, and they, yeah. they do stop. Yeah, my SEM stopped. It's been, it's been in repair for about two months now, or something. Oh. Like that. Apparently, it's all up to scratch now, which is great. I did get fifteen years or something when we got. It was fifteen years ago when we got them or something like that. Yes, we both. Yeah, we bought four, didn't we, and split them in half. Yeah, where did they come from? Has somebody pulled a four voice to bits? That's what oh, terrifies right. me. Oh, yeah, it's awful, isn't it? But so I got fifteen years before it broke. Really, it's been yeah. working all that time. Yeah, and there's no light on it. I can never tell whether it's on or off. So yeah. it probably stayed on for about twelve years before <laughs> I realised I hadn't turned it off. <laughs> yeah. Poor thing. I had a light put on mine. Oh, but the VCS three, that's the other one. Isn't yeah, it? actually, I completely. Yeah. That's oh my god. Just totally. You just put a sound through it, and it's it's like taking a Polaroid. Um, it just does something. Yeah. That is instantly has a kind of atmosphere and um, sort of like a sepia quality to it that. In, it is instantly uh, musical somehow. It is. It's got a fan, like in the same way the mini mig, and it's and they were kind of around at the same time. People used to have one of well, Eno certainly did, didn't he? Um, there's something about it that's incredibly musical, even though it's kind of like a laboratory. It's got a, a really musical vibe about it. The sound of it's lovely, isn't it? You yes. Know, the oscillators sound good. The filter sounds good. The reverb sounds good, and it can sound rank as well. And um, it, they, they are absolutely excellent. I couldn't live without that, actually. I've used it so much since I bought mine. Mm. Um, and the Alt 2600 is also, it's a kind of American version of the VCS3, isn't it? It's, it's a slightly more logically well, laid out. Well, the, the Alt 2600. Oh, yeah, that's, a, yeah. that's another one that you yeah. can't really do without. I couldn't, I love mine, yeah, absolutely. And they're all old, though, aren't they? Which is interesting, isn't it?
trying to think of anything I've new that I've used. Well, I really like the little um, microcorg. There's a, the new microcorg that's got a really excellent vocoder. I mean, it's probably better than most of the analog vocoders out there. I would say in terms of instantly, you know, they're endlessly fiddly to try and get the inputs and the outputs and, yeah. the, and the the speech and the excitement and all the rest of it. But this, you just put a <whistles> mic on it. <clears throat> sing into it or speak into it whatever you want to do and it sounds like a really good vocoder so yeah probably you have to pay many thousands of pounds to get a retro bit of kit that sounds as good as that yeah there is progress oh, I've got enough synths now I just yeah. feel like I've got so many that I I don't think there's any area that isn't covered other than other than some crapness probably you know something that's like going to sound really rubbish you know um that's right. I mean, a lot of the toys, a lot of toys can sound good, can't they? You know, the yeah. musical toys, I think, uh, are always worth investigating. Um, I think the, uh, the you know, we've, we've gone through the, the era when we, when we think that Jupiter 8s, you've got to have a Jupiter 8, you've got to have some flagship monster synthesizer yeah. sort of, and a wind machine, you know, and some dry ice to, sort of, <laughs> to make it, to make some good sounds. I think now we know that... Um, it's not about that, it's about, you know, something having a little atmosphere and something made by Mattel. Yeah, I've got it. that thing that you've got over there, Mattel thing. Oh, what, the little guitar? No, thingy. the beatbox thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that is, the, that is very much the sound of Jeff's um, record at the moment, you know. Um, what's it called? Drum, a drum, anyway. It's, uh, they're very cool, I think. Yeah. If you can mod them wildly. Um, put them through a few things and get somebody to make it so that you can switch them, switch the beats on and off and I think it will be good you know an RA Moog from 1970 that's going to be 60 grand and it's going to sound amazing of course it's going to sound amazing and all of those things are amazing you get but at the, uh, at the same time there's really cheap stuff I mean guitars in terms of guitars I'll play anything you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be I'm not really interested in 1957 or 1959 Les Paul, you know, with PF pickups on, I'm really not. I wouldn't have one if I, it wouldn't, I'd much rather have, you know, a piece of crap from the, the mid-70s or 80s. I'm, I'm looking to try and get a pointy-headed um, Van Halen guitar at the moment because I think there's mileage in that, you know, uh, with a diving whammy bar and everything. Um, I think it's, you, you find something and you make something with it. All, lots of the music that we all hear is made by, you know, whatever you've got really we were talking about this earlier on whether what it's like to come into your own studio which is so loaded with incredibly vintage mat incredible equipment it sometimes can be overwhelming and actually not and and kind of stifle creativity so there is hope you just get something out of a junk shop or some you know like that um Korg you're just talking about I mean, they're bloody amazing aren't they you, you used that recently in Joan of Arc and um the bass sounded, I mean, I couldn't really, you used an SH9 before, and it, it was just as cool, you know, massive sound, wasn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I think there's lots Incredible. of um, amazing things out there, and uh, I think what you're saying is right, it's not, it's making what you've got um, go as far as you can, and, and as much as possible, things will plug in to other things, and that's always interesting, that when, yeah. when you get something vintage, you know, doing something to some, something digital and... Whatever it is, you know, I think it's just, just try, you know, and then accidents, you know, when when you spill something on the synth and it starts smoking, you know, that's probably the, its best noise. I don't know, you know, it's just. It's right, actually, the best guitar sounds I've ever had were, were actually, and I'm not joking, twice when my amp was on fire <laughs> and I hadn't noticed. Uh, you know, it was actually smoke pouring out of it, and I was playing and thought, this is, my God, this feels amazing, and then it stopped. And so. Oh, it's that, isn't it? It's just, it's just that last fire. minute. Yeah, <laughs> an old Vox I had, and and an, and an old Selma. Both of them caught fire and sounded completely amazing for the last three minutes of their life. <laughs>
I've got some of that stuff, but I'd like to have a really big one. And, and a four voice uh, Oberheim or two voice. Yeah. I mean, all of that sounds brilliant. I, I think, uh, I mean, I'm, I haven't got many compressors. You're very good. You've got a, a lot of really lovely vintage compressors, and I haven't. Um, so I'd, I'd like to find a nice old compressor and uh, get to grips with that and stop using the sort of, you know, fake ones in the plug-in world and grow up a bit. And, uh, <laughs> grow get, up well. Yeah, on. Get, get a really nice compressor. I mean, obviously a fair child would be nice, but... Um, I reckon they're, they're not Uri. all good, are they? No, because I've heard some no, not very good. It depends on what you consider good or not, I guess, doesn't it? They're, yeah. they're really, they are like that, compressors. Holiday I'd, in the Caribbean would also be good. You know, Some sleep would be really yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I reckon a year, uh, 1176, you'd love it. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, I just have mine permanently hooked up in a chain. And it goes. From the Carrex into that, into the into whatever I plug it into in the desk you know? mm. and it just always sounds good does it? or whatever because yeah. at the moment I just use this which is a little symmetrics yeah you've had that for a long long time haven't you I know that and it actually and that's fine as well it sounds quite good I, when I, I actually tried with some other co anyway I do need to get a proper one yeah but um, you won't go wrong with one of them okay thank you you heard it here <laughs>